All right, so once again, thank you guys for having me. Thank you, Jake. Um, it's really an honor to coach higher level athletes and just kind of take my gymnastics days um, into the CrossFit world for you guys as well, too. Um, we're going to really work on, you guys are really have a lot of the foundation, so we're going to work on kind of um, zoning in on that a little bit, but more about efficiency and speed at this point in the game. Um, we're going to do handstand work in here, and then we'll go out and do some rig work in there as well, too. A lot of it's going to be about just like body awareness and understanding where you are when we're upside down and stuff, um, and that way it'll help you with the speed of everything as well, too. If you have any questions or anything like doesn't feel right, please make sure you come ask me because we can learn from all of you. It'll be a little bit of like a show and tell too. I'm gonna be like, hey, show me this and let's kind of break it down and see which techniques work better as well too. Cool, so I might use you as guinea pigs. Um, all right, so I'm gonna have you guys come out here. Let's just warm up really fast shoulders and just get blood pumping a little bit. Um, come on out here, just watch the objects. Don't roll an ankle. Yeah, please. <laughs> All right, let's just get in um, 10 burpees, like warm up pace, nothing crazy. 10 burpees. After 10 burpees, stay on the floor on your 10th and do uh, 10 push ups. We're going to be working on some freestanding handstand push-ups, so that'll be a good warm-up for that as well, too. It's a little cold in here. We, you know, making you making sure you're warmer. <laughs> <You're> right, <laughs> bodybuilding pump. All right, just come, we're gonna warm up shoulders just a little bit more, just opening up our shoulder angle. So we're gonna get into kind of a straddle. We're gonna reach through, and then you're gonna, hold, you're gonna hold your hands together, and we're gonna keep our chest parallel to the ground, but drive our arms up. Just watch what it looks like, fast motion. So I'm gonna reach through, and then drive, reach through, drive, reach through, drive. Your hamstrings will also love this. Do 10 of those. Really reach through for the hamstrings as well too. Keep that chest parallel because we're working on opening the shoulder through our ears. We want arms swinging behind the ears. Nice. <laughs> A little bit tight there. Good. Uh, grab behind and then just lean over. How are we doing with that? <laughs> we have to work on a little shoulder mobility, Jake. We need to uh, add this in. <laughs> Good. All right, and then just pull your arm in. As well, too. <laughs> Other arm. Good. All right. Let's come on over here. We'll warm up a little bit as we move through this. And you guys, like when I'm talking, you can sit and relax a little bit as well, too, if you want. All right. So we're going to first go over the wall walk full turn. So may or may not show up, but you guys have done full turns, freestanding kind of on the box as well, too. Um, and there's a really good technique to make sure that this is efficient as well too. So first let's go over the wall walk, just making sure that we understand like the quickest way. Remember we're, we're now like focusing really on efficiency and speed of, not, of making sure we fatigue as little as possible. So for the wall walk, keep your hands under your shoulders. The wider we get, the more fatigued we'll get. You can turn your um, wrists if you want a lot of people with shoulder mobility issues might have um, less trouble going up with your hands turned just out slightly. So get your butt to the wall really um, close. Biggest step up you can. That's going to start your angle really high. 
And what I like to do is almost get into kind of a handstand right away. So I'm pressing down with my back muscles instead of really fatiguing at an angle. So you'll notice I'll kind of almost kick up and I'll be in a little bit more of a handstand than keeping my um, feet on the wall the whole time. So look at the difference. If I get there. Now, if you have to get both feet on the wall, I'll get both feet up and then I'll kind of float back up. And um, that helps me use back muscles and less shoulder muscles. And that's more of a strength for me. So these are just techniques you can kind of try out and see what works best for you. All right, so that's just efficiency with the wall walk. Let me have everybody just do two wall walks just to warm up, then we'll go over the full turn. Remember for the wall walk, tight core is really important and you're pushing down through the mat like you're making a palm print. The second you arch your back, you're gonna fatigue more. So really tight core. Good. What's your name? Nina. Nina. I'm gonna have, I like the little hop you had. All right, so let's kind of look at this. This is a little bit more of what I was talking about. You'll see a little kind of a float or like a hop. Go ahead. So when she comes up, she'll float and hop. So you can do it as you're coming up to the wall or you can do it. So go ahead and float and hop again. Like, and now go ahead and as you push down, see if you can get a little more into the handstand before you get up to the wall. Go ahead and walk your hands towards. So yeah, keep walking. Good. So you're more upright, go ahead and down. So she's more upright than at an angle as she's walking. And I find it easier to walk more upright as well too. So a little bit of that hop up and then I was getting you into the handstand a little bit sooner than, and that gets you to the wall really fast as well too. Cool. All right, let's talk about the full turn. So you're gonna have a pivot foot. When you think of turning, you want to think of a string pulling you up straight like, um, like a ballerina turns, right? So the more straight lined you are, the easier it is to find your balance. If our hip is way over here, over, not over our shoulder, it's going to be really challenging to stay upright, all right? So I'm going to show you this pivot foot. So let's say we wall walk up. I'm going to leave a pivot foot. And that's kind of that string pulling me straight up and I want to stay over that pivot foot. And then as I turn around, I'm going to get the other foot to be the pivot foot. So we're kind of switching as we come around. My eyesight is always going to be towards my hands, but I'm not throwing my head out because if I arch, I'm not going to be able to turn well. So if my spine is stacked, I'm able to turn by you know, that string pulling me up really, really tall, all right? So what I want you guys to practice is a half turn. And I want you to focus on that pivot foot. So we're gonna get up and we're gonna get, it doesn't matter, it'll be natural, I'm a righty, so my right, turn, my right foot's usually um, the pivot foot and I turn towards this way. So what I want you guys to just practice is going halfway around and seeing if you can get your heel to stay onto the wall. Got it? All right, let's leave a little more space. Um, we, can, we can turn on the floor as well too. It doesn't have to be on the mat. But let me have a few of you guys come on up and let's try just half turn to it. Keep your eye on your hands. The closer your arms are under your shoulder, the easier it is. So if you get too wide, you're gonna start moving too far away from the center of your body. Go slow so you know where you're going. Keep that heel, so first the toe, then the heel. If the toe or heel comes off the wall, you're not applying as much pressure. Get the toe on, go ahead. Good. So one leg is off and one leg is on. Mm -hmm. Yes, good. 
All right, let me pause you for one second. So here's, here's what that first group did that was making their foot come off the wall. You want, remember I said you want like a string pulling you up. You got to get one foot into the handstand. See how that foot stays in that handstand, the one off the wall? So if you, if you try and get this like too far away from that handstand, you're going to fall off the wall. So pretend you're being pulled up by a string. That one foot's the handstand. The other foot is that pivot. All right, go ahead and try it again. Go slow so you know where you're going. Stay right under it. Yep, yep, yep. There you go. There you go. Good. OK, so as, yep, so as your arms got wider and wider as you started to turn. Try it again. Keep your hands under your shoulders. That was good back over there. That was a good turn. OK, good. Get your hands in more narrow. Tuck your rib. Yep. If you guys start to arch, you're going to lose it. Go ahead. Yep. There you go. Find the heel now. Mm -hmm. Good. See how we're really pretty arched right there? That's why it's making it hard to turn. You have to brace your core, like get really, really tight in the core, and that will help. Yes. So hard. So. The reason I'm having you guys keep your foot on the wall is let's pretend there's a line and you can't cross it. So a lot of you, uh, she was just saying it's easier to do freestanding, the turn, because you have more leeway, right, to move around. Because a lot of you handstand turn around instead of staying in a one position, right? Um, and we're going to get challenged later on those plates when you have to handstand turn. So I'm trying to teach you to stay underneath your hips and shoulders, because if you have to stay within a line, you can't come off the wall, pivot, and then get back on the wall. So that's why I'm teaching you on the pivot foot, because that wall is really going to be close. If you start to arch, you're going to lose the um, long line of being pulled up. So brace the rib. Got it? All right, once you've tried the um, the half turn and you feel confident that your heel is staying on the wall. So remember, we're keeping under. See how narrow my hands are? A lot of you are getting really wide and you're moving around too much. Once I get to the halfway mark, I'm switch feet and pivot around again. So watch my feet. That's one foot. Now I pivot around again. And I'm staying in a really tiny space, right? I'm, my shoulders are even, pro or my hands are probably more narrow than you even handstand walk or handstand hold. And remember, it's like a pull, like think about a string or a pole going right through you, pulling you tall, and that will be the easiest way to pivot. All right, let's see if we can get one or two in. Go for it. There you go. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Keep the hands under. Keep the hands under. Really narrow, really narrow. Yep, that's all right. Come down. Good. So your, your three-quarter turn was awesome. Yeah. As you turned past the three-quarter, this, yeah, this hand got a little bit away from the center of your hip. Mm -hmm. So think about saying, like, imagine just like a circle right here and keeping those hands within that circle. That's it. Let me see. There you go, fun. Good, you did a good job recovering with that hip. Tuck the rib, Tyler. Yep. That was good. OK. After that three quarter, hip, hip started to fall because the leg started to come this way. So if our leg is here, we, we pretend it's like glued to the wall. And the reason that all happened was you started to open up your rib. Try and keep that rib down. Yeah. Like your spine wants to be completely in line with each other, stacked. Remember to keep those hands really underneath and that rib tight. Yep. Rib down. Mm-hmm. 
Good, good. You got it. Yep. Now the heat. Yep. Uh huh. Yep. You're on this one. Yep. You're turning towards me. I'm opening my right hand. Uh huh. Nope. You turn the other way. Okay. You got to keep turning that way. Take a rest for a sec. Anybody successful with it? Okay. We'll watch some successful ones, and then we'll watch some that need help. There you go. Nice. That was excellent recovery. Good. You did a good job of like bracing that core. So right as you started to lose it, you were opening up, and then you're like, mm, and, it, and it helped save you. Good job. Nice. All right. Let's watch um, anybody that wants help, like if they want like me to kind of guide them. Don't worry if like I've been doing this since I was six. That's why it looks like you know easy. So you guys are just learning this. So. There you go. Good. Hands in tight. Mm -hmm. Good. Find the pivot foot. Excellent. Nice. Yes. That was really good. Was that their first one? Yeah. Oh, heck yeah. See, a little pressure. You can say, like, if you don't think you can do it, and a little pressure will help. That was really good. Anybody else? I need help with just the half. Yes. Let me see it. Nice. Good. Okay. So I'm going to help you a little with the wall walk as well, too. Okay. All right. So right as you went to wall walk, I knew what your issue was going to be with the half because yeah. I saw it kind of in the wall walk. So you have a, a bit of an arch. Yeah. It's really hard to turn in an arch position because it, it sets you off balance, yeah. right? And so the wall walk itself is a little bit more labored when you're arching as well, too. It's like two broken boards trying to be carried together versus one board that you carry. Right. All right. So okay. we want your we want from like here down to just be one unit. Right. Yeah. And that's easier to move through space than two separate units. Right. All right. So when you go ahead, hip up to the wall. Good. Now, right as you step up, I want you to bring your ribs down to your belly button. Yes. Like I'm punching you in the gut. Good. Uh -huh. Okay. And then step up again. Good. Now punch in the gut. That. Good. Now don't move this. Squeeze your glutes and now walk up. Tight, tight, tight. Yes. Much better. Good. All right. Now keep that position as you turn. Go ahead. Pivot, pivot, pivot with that foot. Yep. Good, good, good. Good. That was better. You just okay. slid on this, but the yeah. wall walk itself was better. Okay. So if you work on this, like think about somebody like punching you in the gut and you just tightening your abs and squeezing your glutes. Okay. And that's going to help you move quicker through space as well too. It's going to be more, less labored yeah. okay. as well. Thank you. Yeah. Good job. Anybody else? Go. All right. <laughs> Miley is so volunteered for that one. She wasn't pushed into it at all. Good. Okay. Nice. Good recovery. Excellent. Good. All right. Good recovery. We had legs like kind of wobbling around. Did you know where your feet were when you were turning? Okay. So this is also like when we're, we don't, you guys haven't lived upside down for, you know, since you were six years old, right? This is all pretty new as an adult probably. So we don't really have awareness of where we are when we're upside down. Video yourself in every handstand you do, and then watch it and be like, oh, wait, my legs were there. I didn't feel them at all. Then you'll start to be aware. So when you go on up into the handstand, I want you to like pause for a second, feel the, the tactile cue of where your toe hits the wall, and then pretend it's glued to the wall. And that's where you'll need to kind of stay under that pivot. Good recovery, though. Anything? Anybody else want to try? Okay. Good. Yep. There you go. I like how the he's narrow in the um, stance of his hands, which is good. Okay. Good. Okay. All right. So. That's all right. So right after that half turn, you started to arch, and you were trying to turn while you were arched. So it's okay if you have to kind of reset. But watch like, so if I turn 
you got here, and then to get your heel on, you arched instead of keeping this leg overstacked and just bending your leg to get the heel on. So if you were to see yourself, you leaned instead of just moved and stayed oh, straight. I see, I see. Try it again. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Get the man some chalk too. <laughs> Good, brace. Good, all right. Go ahead and pivot foot, yep. Good, now tuck that rib, yes. Good, all right, ready? Yeah. Foot in close, your feet are too, yep. Go ahead, keep the rib down. All right, that's all right. I, I don't know what the foot, like what? So once you're here, once you turned here, you went like this, and now I have to chase my foot. Okay. So, so if. Keep the feet more stacked. So I wanna be right underneath my hip again. So once you turned, you were here, and now I'm chasing oh. way harder than if I were right under here and turning. Try. <laughs> Good, be aware of how close your feet are. So you almost want heels to touch, yep. One foot's gonna be in the handstand, one's pivoting. That's all right, that's all right. We can walk down the wall. Start from the half, to, no, start from the um, back to the wall. Finish the turn, yep. So see how this is, yep, good. There you go. Good. That was good. That was good. So break it down. Don't be afraid to work it in parts, too. Yep. You've been upside down quite a bit, too. So There you go. All right, so we did like a little swivel foot, which is fine, too, if you want to switch your feet underneath. That's all right. So again, I would video yourself so you understand what your feet are doing. Um, because you start close and then right as you start to turn, they start to widen again. Gotcha, okay. Um, and that's going to make you chase after it. That makes sense. That yeah. Makes sense. Your stance is really good with your hands, though. And your rib is in a good position. I think you're just trying to chase after your chase feet. Chase after my feet. That makes sense. Thank exactly. You. You're welcome. All right. Good work. We're going to take what we learned and we're going to move on to this plate. So because we don't have, like, you know, 20 ramps for all of you and stuff, I figured the games also could throw in something different, right, to be a little bit more accurate. So accuracy is one of those 10 GPPs. So a plate is a little bit harder because you have to stay more narrow. This actually is gonna help you over there. It's gonna like make you understand what that means. So the standard for today is your heel of your hand has to be on the plate, but if your fingers are off, that's okay, all right? now. I love that this plate has this silver center because guess what? That's where you're gonna be spinning around. So if I was just like here, my whole body is staying tall and long and I'm spinning around it. Got it? Now, I like to bend my knees but keep my spine stacked. So I move through space easier when I'm shorter. That's why gymnasts are tiny. Um, so Bending at the knee helps me turn better. Um, this is all very personal and up to you. But the standard when we do this is you have to walk to the plate, start on the ground, full turn, and then step off the ground. Then you can relax, basically. So that's like completing a rep. So if I were to walk on the plate, I'm going to keep my hands kind of right here. You'll notice my knees are bent. What's my spine doing? Straight. So I can't turn like that. It's gonna be really, really hard. I'm gonna show you when my hip gets off what that looks like. So if I start to turn and I follow, chase around, my hip gets off center, that's when you're gonna fall over. So if I turn with my hip kind of center of that um, silver, It'll be much easier. And again, you could see I was just off just a little bit, and it was really hard for me to hold on to that. This is the ultimate accuracy. It might take you a few times to figure it out as well, too. Um, so let's try some turns on these plates. I'm going to kind of watch you guys. But let's before we do that, I'm going to have you do some turns over here as well, too, on different heights. So we're kind of going over all scenarios that could happen. And again, this is just like 
getting it all over to practice in case something shows up, right? So here's kind of like last year where you could kick up to it and turn into the handstand. Let's pretend it's a little higher. Even if this was higher, I know a lot of you can kick up to this. But what if it's an object that's high? It's almost impossible to kick up to. I wanted you guys to get practice kind of jumping into a handstand or pressing into that handstand. So we're going to start on two feet. And you're going to plant your hands. And we're going to have to shift our shoulders and hips over our hands. But we're going to be gripping with our fingers in order to save ourselves from going over. Got it? So I'm going to be jumping up into a handstand and turning. Again, I stayed tucked because I felt like I can spin easier in that tucked position. So for this one, I don't want you guys practicing the kick up that you saw like that because the object might be too high to kick up to. I want you guys to, or they might have a standard that you have to press to it. Got it? All right, so again, it's all about finding that stacked position. That's really the theme of any handstand work you do. The more stacked your spine is, your hips, shoulders, um, and, and wrists are over each other, the easier it is to do any handstand work whatsoever. Cool? So we're just going to try all these different stations, and I'm just going to walk around and help you. So I picture the hips. I picture somebody holding my hips and me turning around as they're holding my hips straight over. A lot of it is driving through the palm and using the back muscles. So it's a lot about pressing through the floor using the upper back muscles. All right, let's give it a go. Again, please be mindful of your ankles when you're near the plate. I speak from experience, that's why I constantly remind people. All right, let's get a few of you trying this, go ahead. Also, if you're, if you're trying to play for the first time, start on the plate and just start like figuring out how to just do like a turn before you work on walking up it. Start kicking on the plate. Feel how it feels to kick up on that plate. How to get those hips over. Good. Remember, slow and controlled. So if you kick a little too fast, you're going to lose the balance. So first we got to go slow, then we can speed it up. Good. That was a little, so you had an underturn? So you went here, which will make it a little harder to um, finish the turn. So if we, can, if we stay here a little bit wider, that might help you. Yeah, so, so you did like this, but, which is great for bars. Do, were you a gymnast? OK, yeah, I was like, that's like a full turn on bars. But it's going to be too hard on the plate, because then we don't have, yeah, because we can't. So for a bar turn, we have no we have no plate over here. Yeah, this one yeah. has to. Okay. Exactly. Got it. Thank yeah. You. Talking about as soon as you turn, like keep this hand planted, but turn this one first. No. Um. So what she did was she turned. This is a like a, a gymnast technique on bars. She turned this because you can do that for like a like if you're doing a full turn on bars. But for this, I want to see you kind of go around the plate. Go ahead, let me see. There you go, there you go. Good. Like, Try bending at the knee. It's easier. You know, yes, yes, yeah, see, 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 that was good, that was good. That was good, yeah. When she turns, she like, like if I'm turning right, she just turns this knee. Yeah. Rather than like this. So I wouldn't That's overthink it. About. Yes. Well, no, yeah. she was doing something completely different. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But don't overthink it. Just like let your, yeah. Go, go a little more in this way. So if you're plate walking, um, I like to kick up this way so I can kind of grip the edge of the plate a little. That'll help too. All right, so your hip has to go over the shoulders a little more. Yep, hold on. Yep, there you go. 
Good. So you're trying to turn too. You're trying to turn too early. You got to get balance first. I could tell right away, like as I was walking up, that was gonna work because your hip was right over your like midline. Yeah. Like that was really good, really good. And the hand position and the leg bend kept the spine in line. That was a really nice turn. All right. There you go. Yep, yep. Oh, so close, so close. Good. Yep. It's, it's, there's so much accuracy involved. It's crazy. Yes. <laughs> Just keep walking around. You'll find it again. You'll find it again. All right, so come on down. Okay, get it, get it, get it. Okay, so the first time you walked up, you tried to turn like this. So your shoulders are at this angle, which is making you arch. If you can open that shoulder angle, so do this. You're here, press up, yes. And put your hands like this, like around the plate. Good. So you have really good shoulder mobility. So you were trying to turn. You were trying to turn like that. You got to push up. That's going to stack you a little more. Okay. That's it. That's it. Keep the hip right over the center. Uh huh. Good recovery. Good. Good. Also, let me um, remind you, this is really difficult and challenging. So the accuracy is like 100% on an object this small. So if we're practicing on something this small, then maybe if we have a larger surface area to spin, where our confidence is like, heck yeah, I almost can do it on the plate. So now I'm good with, with more surface area. There you go, there you go. Good recovery. All right, so one hand went on, yeah. then, or went off, then you got your hip back in line. Really good. And it takes a lot of practice. Like, I, I'm not accurate every single time I do it myself either. It was really good. Much better, good. The shoulder position, everything, yes. Good. I'll spot you. Okay, which, which leg do you kick up on? Okay, hold on. Which leg? Just do it naturally. Okay, yep. I thought that was one. All right, I'm gonna spot you. We're gonna go for it. Ready? Okay. Yep. Good. Okay, come down. All right, so for safety, you're doing this, and that's like a, your body's like, whoa, no thanks, you know? So when you get more comfortable, we're gonna have to stick the head out a little bit less but our eyes are, are seeing. Let's try to do on too. Yeah. All right, let's try it again. Press down, press down. Good. Okay, now let's fix the position. Yes, there. Good, keep going. Good, keep going. Good, good. So it's hard to turn because you're just, you get halfway and then you go back to that old habit of safety. Yeah. It's so easy to turn on the floor, but it's not. It's because I'm just doing it the way that I want to do it, yeah. not the right way. Right, right. And there's a lot more surface area yeah. to turn as well, too. Oh, shoot. <laughs> We're going to stay in the middle. <laughs> That's all right. So, yeah. I think I went to the side. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, start in the middle and then I'll, I'll scratch. Hold on. Yep. Press up. Good, good, good. Sorry. Good. No, you got it. Yep. Keep your hands in more narrow. Good. So, see how much you're moving around? Yeah. Your hands are getting really wide, then going here, then going here. Okay. If we keep turning under, yeah. pretend there's like a circle right here and you can't go outside it, just like the plate. Try one more time. Good press. Good. Stay right under. Good. Good. Better. More control too. That was good. Do you guys have a time? 
942? Okay. All right. We're going to stop here. We're going to stop here. Um, I want to go over just holds and handstand push ups really quick, freestanding. And then we're going to do about six, seven minutes of rig work. The rig work will be much quicker than the handstand work. Um, any questions on this? All right, so like I said, we're practicing the hardest, and that way everything hopefully will be easier. Got it? All right, so let's talk about holds. Everything in the hold is exactly what we were talking about here. So we want to keep our body stacked, our spine in line, our arms closer under our body is easier than way out here, less fatiguing. Think about dumbbells, right? If we push press out here versus push press up here, it's much easier, all right? When we go for the hold, we want our forearms to be really engaged. So our fingers are gripping, but we're driving through the foot of our palm. So it's like everybody lift a foot. What are your toes doing? Gripping. What are your heel doing? It's not off the ground. It's grounded on. This is basically what your fingers are doing in order to balance on the handstand as well too. Got it? Eyesight. You want to be able to see your hands, but also if you open up too much, it's going to overarch you. That might fatigue you a little. For holds, I recommend a smaller position. So um, stag, knee bend. I always find a spot on the ground, so I'm like kind of looking right here, and I just stare at it, and I'm pressing through. You'll see my fingers. Just, just look at my fingers. So they're really doing a lot of work of that balance. All right, now from there, let's say we have to hold for five seconds, then we have to do five freestanding handstand push-ups. My hands are too narrow, so I'm gonna have to go a little wider if I know I have to go from a hold to a handstand push-up. So freestanding handstand push-up. There's a few ways that they could um, standardize it. One, no bend at the hip. That's really a strict handstand push-up. Two, you can bend at the hip a little bit quicker. If you are able to bend at the hip, you want to be able to land a little more on the top of your head because that's the kip. So let's go over here where there's, come to the side of me so you guys can see. All right. <clears throat> so <clears throat> if we're able to bend at the hip, I want to be on the top of my head so I can kind of kip up. If I'm not able to bend at the hip, I, hold on, I can tap quickly and I'm really tapping here. It's a quicker point of like, this is, this'll, this'll hit the floor first if you open your head, like your um, top of your forehead versus the bottom of your head or the top of your head. Does that make sense? Okay. That's also about where to look and balance. So I basically, as I'm coming down, I'm seeing over here, and then as I press back up, I look back at my hands, and that's gonna help me balance through each rep. So you don't wanna look straight through the wall. You'll lose your center of where you are in space. So if I'm looking straight through the wall the whole time, that's like closing my eyes and trying to balance. I don't have anything grounding me to where I am. So eyesight's important as well too. Find some sort of spot and kind of focus on it. Make sense? Okay, any questions on that? All right. Um, let's go to rig work. We can, Jake, I can stay here for the rig work. Um, it's a little high. Actually, you know what? It's a little high. Let's move over. We'll do about, we got seven, like six, seven minutes for rig work? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Let's go in there then. No. Yeah, this is probably too high. Now that I think about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, you want me to go over that with them? Like have them watch them do that? Freestanding hands and hold? Okay. Yeah, if you want to unpack that, then we'll go up there. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. Let's work on some freestanding handstand holds. I want you to do three. Um, well, I want you to do freestanding handstand hold. And then I want you guys to do um, a strict handstand push up into it. So you can do it out here or you can do it on the mat. So once the hold starts when you aren't moving. 
So remember, you're going to have to get a little bit wider. We're going to go five, four, three, two, one, if we can, and then come down, tap, and back up. Let's try it out here or out there. No hip bend. So that's why you can do it on the floor. Slowly lower, eye gaze, eye gaze. Good. Grip with the fingers, grip with the fingers. Good. There you go. All right. As you guys lower into the handstand push up, grip the floor even more and spot where, spot right in front of your hands, and that will help you balance a little bit more. Grip with your fingers. Yep. Stick. Okay, come down. Remember how we were talking about, oh, okay. I thought you told me to come in. Um, so remember how we were talking about that shoulder angle? Yeah. You gotta push open. Because right now you're like this. If you can get a little more stacked, you're gonna balance a little more. Okay. So think about growing taller. Yeah. Try it one more I time. Like when I come this way, I start walking. Okay, I'm gonna help you. Good. Yes, okay, hold on, hold on. Go slow though, go slow. Don't, don't make like any harsh movements, good. Okay. Eyes are still gazing, right there. Yep, press through your palms, good. Grip with your fingers, there you go. Good, come all the way down, not handstand push up. That was better. Good, try and breathe. So don't make panicky moves. If you make them too quickly, then um, you're gonna overcorrect, okay. and that's why you feel like you're overwalking. You're, yeah. you're panicking in that. Okay, so kick up slower. So when I kick up, I'm already balanced right here. So the key is is to get low to the ground and kick up nice and slow. So this foot's already balanced in that handstand. Let's try that. Go nice and slow. Get low to the ground. Yep. And it just takes practice. Unfortunately, handstands take a lot of practice. Yeah, but just lower to the ground, okay. long body, and, and yep. All right. There you go. You're probably just too narrow to handstand push up. Yep. Yes! Good, you, you, uh, that was so good, that was so good. All right, also for the handstand push-up, if you wanna turn your hands just slightly like a three to five degree, if you know you're going from a hold to a handstand push-up, that's helpful too. If you turn too much though, you won't be able to balance in that handstand hold because you won't have your fingers just like we were using our toes to balance as well too. Good? All right. Let's take one more minute and then we're gonna go to uh, rig work. That's it, that's it, squeeze, 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 good. The key to handstand push-up is squeezing your glutes and abs as you come down and up. Get tight, get really, really tight, that will help you balance. Ooh. Press, squeeze, good, good. Yeah, I'm gonna spot you, I want you to go a little slower down. First, in control, squeeze your abs. Good, ready? Just stick your head out just a little less. Yep, so tall, mm-hmm, ready? Tuck your head just a little bit, good, and press. Good. All right, so you're having issues because we're way out here. Open the shoulders by pressing, and that will help you. It's almost really, really, it, it's, it's very difficult to do a strict handstand push-up, arched and in control because what, what will control you is the abs contracting in the glutes. And when you contract your abs, look what happens. So contract your abs, you get stacked, right? So let's try that one more time. Less of this, more of that. Press tall, press tall. Yep, okay, heads out. Get your ears in line with your arms. Tuck that, good. 
Squeeze your abs, squeeze your abs. There you go. Good. I want you to video yourself. You're still really out like this. I want yours in line with arms. All right. All right, guys, let's go on over the rig. Is it good to go over there? All right. Come on over. We're going to go out to the other side. Um, you can bring your grips. We're going to go over to the far one. Okay. Yeah, just go over. Okay. Like five minutes. <laughs> okay. All right, come on in a little bit closer if you guys are in this session. <laughs> okay. Anybody, um, when they do a pullover, get dizzy? Okay. So, again, just like the handstands, eyesight's going to help you a ton. Wear a spot. So we want to keep our eyes on the horizon, which will also follow our body. As we're spinning, we want to find our knees. I find, again, a tuck position a little bit easier and quicker. But if you're getting dizzy, you're probably looking around too much. All right. So when I jump up, my eyes are going to be on the horizon. And when I pull over, I'm going to be looking for my knees. And I'm going to keep my, my eye gaze on my knees until I'm almost all the way around. Then I kind of find like the horizon again, which is a little bit down and in front. All right. Now, let's talk about stringing them together. The key is not to bend your arms too quickly. So as I drop, I'm not really pushing away too much, but I want to make sure that my hip is over the bar before I bend my arms or, or above my shoulder. And if you were to slow this down, like I have a video on my Instagram, really slow down of connecting pullovers, you'll see that my hip gets above my shoulder before I bend my arm again to connect. Got it? All right, let's try um, three pullovers. Then we're gonna go into forward rolls. And if you're having trouble connecting, then I'll come help you around. Yeah. Your first one, are you directly under and you're just pulling up? Yes. Yes, so my first one, I'm directly under it. You don't have to be, but I find it easier yeah, to be like directly under it. it like I think the momentum gets yeah, a little yeah. bit harder. Yes. The tighter your body is, the easier it is. So she's kind of doing like a, a mini giant, like a half giant, swinging a little bit, yep, which is fine. The momentum might help you. That's good. So heel, so what happened was you opened up your rib yeah. instead of keeping your eyes on your knees. So go ahead and keep your eyes on your knees. Don't hit each other. There you go, Paige. Nice. So you'll see her arm stays really straight before she starts that final spin over. All right, eyes are staying on the knees. Pull up, yep, pull up. Pull up, up, and around. Ooh. Eyes on the knees, try it again with it, and more control at the top. Okay, but stay up there. Oh, so okay. I want you to press down. All right. Stay up. Good. Okay, now I want you to try the next one. Keeping your eyes on your knees, pull up. Good. All right, you have to swing out just a little bit more and pull up. Good. That was much better. Good. Are your eyes on your knees, like more focus? That was much better. Good. All right. Again, same, same cues as a thing. Core, core, everything. Once you open up, once you loosen up, you're going to lose that power and momentum. <clears throat> brace. Try it again. I know I'm in your way. Sorry. Pull up. Brace. So where your eyes came off your knees too early. Yeah. Try it again. I'm trying not to bend my elbows, but that's so hard. No, you're going to bend. You're going to no, bend. I mean like before my. Oh, oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? That's more to string it together, okay. not the first one. Don't worry about that right now. Ready? Big pull. Stay tight. Stay tight. Squeeze. 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 Okay. Like if someone were to punch you, okay. you'd be like, mm, that would reflect it off. Yes. Good. Keep your eyes on your knees. Eyes on your knees. Ready? Try it again. Eyes on the knees. Eyes on the knees. Good. It's too fast. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
is better though. So see that open arch? Keep your eyes on your knees a little more. Keep in that hollow a little bit longer. Try it again. Eyes on the knees, find the knees, find the knees. Yes, much better, good. Good. All right. We're gonna take the back roll and move it into a forward roll. This is harder. The key to the forward roll is keeping your hips close to the bar. Second your hips come drop around the bar, you kind of lose it. All right, you know the two shapes in gymnastics, arch and hollow? This is really going to come into play a little bit. In order to start your roll, you're going to slightly drive your heel, very slightly. Then you're going to fold into like a pike or tuck hollow, but you have to aggressively stay folded. Eyes are going to be on my body. So if I back roll, watch, I'm going to drive my heel just slightly, and then I'm going to kind of tuck around the bar. I'm going to do it again. Drive the heel. I'm going to look for my knees. So I'm looking for my knees, looking for my knees. I don't ever stop looking for my knees. As I come around, I still see my knees. In that support, right when I get to the final portion of the support is where I stop seeing my knees and I find the horizon again. Got it? So grips aren't my favorite, but we are going to do a complex with bar muscle-ups, so you can try it with or without. So, all right. There you go, nice. All right, so we're going to do a um, pullover, into a forward roll. So I want to be in control before I start that forward roll. Pull over. I'm going to get really tight with my glutes, drive my heel, come around, keeping my eyes on my knees. If you start looking around, you're going to get very lost. So give it a try. If you want a spot, let me know. There you go, very nice. Good, good, good. All right, let me see this. All right, drive the heel slightly and then fold quick. Heels my butt. Very slightly. So just a tight arch, fold quick. Yep, yep, yep. Good, good, good. That was good. Okay, That's, I see the idea though. When you start it, just worry about the first three quarters. Yeah, 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 you don't have to overcommit yet until you feel comfortable okay, going around. I see. Yeah. All right. Nice. There you go. Nice. Slight drive. Find your knees and fold. Fold, fold. Yep. There you go. Yep. So your hip dropped. Um, you just have to fold tighter. Yep. Drive. Okay. So see how we got stuck? Remember, you got to drive your heel to start the momentum. Drive the heel tight and then fold. Ready? Drive the heel. Oh, yep, yep, that was close, that was close. So when you drive the heel, you're bending. Um, watch me. Okay. This will help you too, Luke. So I'm driving the heel in an arch position. You're trying to do it this way. So I'm arch, and then I fold. Remember when you drive the heel, you're in an arch position, a tight arch. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, nice. Yes. Because you need speed. Good. Hey, would you say grips or no grips? Uh, I think no grips helps me. I like no grips too. Yeah. Yes. Drive the heel, drive the heel. Okay, so you're driving tucked. I want you to fall in an arch. Everybody pause for one sec. Pause for one sec. If you're on the bar, you can get off. <laughs> when you start, you have to start to speed yourself up. It's an arch. Tight arch position, not bend at the knee. Tight arch, quick snap into tuck. All right, go ahead, try it again. Tight arch, quick snap. So you're just slowing yourself down because you're staying really, really here. Bend your knee to your, bend your heel to your butt. Try it again. Good, tight arch in the fall, tight arch. Bend your knee, oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, 
Grapes are a little, uh, a little bit harder for this as well, too. Mm -hmm. Tight arch. OK, so both of you are doing similar things. Okay. You're not starting like this. Start in an arch, like you're falling. Good, and now go. Now spin. Yes, better, better, better. Okay. Better. They're here. Yeah. When you start, and then you fold it around your hip. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Tight arch. Yep. Excellent. Good. Yes. Good. All right. Everybody come over here. Last, last second of like cues for this. Then we're going to go over the workout. Come on over here. Okay, remember how I said in the handstands, take out your phone and video yourself. So, remember I said the two shapes, arch and hollow. So, the arch is really a true arch. That's what starts your momentum. So, it's not just starting to fold, you'll lose momentum. So, again, you have to find that heel drive. It's called heel drive in gymnastics, right? So, when we cast to a handstand, we heel drive and then we get to the handstand. So heel drive, tight arch, then your momentum will start to speed up, then you can tuck and you'll, you want to kind of get the bar right at your hip and you'll spin around the bar. Most of you have found that grips are harder with the forward roll as well too. All right, so good introduction. This is a very new skill for all of you. It may show up. It may not at all. It's just good to have it in your back pocket in case it does.